Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning. And we give a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield Clark County area or looking for a new church home, I invite you to make St. John your new church home. One announcement concerning our worship. We'll be doing something a little different this morning. <clears throat> the uh, praise band has not gotten back together since Christmas break. So instead of special music, like normally the last Sunday of the month, the praise band gives us special music, uh, we will sing, Oh Master, Let Me Walk With You, in number 818, after the reading of the gospel. So uh, where you see the hymn, it says 8 a.m., uh, we will be doing it at 1030 a.m. as well. Choir's always off the last Sunday of the month, and as I said, usually the praise band then plays, but not today, so I will dance it again at the proper time. That will be my change. So I ask that you turn to page 94 in the front of the Red Worship Book in your pew. If you are not familiar with uh, the Lutheran hymnal, Pages are the small numbers at the bottom of the page at the front of the book. Hymns are the large numbers at the top of the page from about the middle of the book to the end. So you want to turn to the front of page 94 as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship in the order of confession and forgiveness. And I invite those who can with that difficulty to please stand. And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is the third Sunday after Epiphany, January the 25th, 2015. Our theme is God has called us and he accepts us into his service. This hymn is written by Robert Lowry, who's a Baptist minister in the 1800s in the United States, a very famous Baptist minister uh, in Pennsylvania. He wrote a lot of other songs that we know, Shall We Gather at the River? Today's song is Life flows in endless song. We invite you to come anytime to worship with us at St. John's Lutheran Church. This is Life Flows in Endless Song. Robert Lowry also wrote, Shall We Gather at the River and Christ Arose.
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And The theme today is God, You Call Us by Grace, and Anne will be reading the scripture, the theme.
of singing responsively Psalm 62. acclamation. Our pastor is Pastor John Pollock. He's at the pulpit reading the gospel. We believe Jesus is here with him, standing beside him, reading the gospel right along with him and inspiring him. We love God's word. Today is the service of the word. Love letters from God to us. Friday, I usually only preach on one, uh, but we're going to be 
beginning with that Wednesday after Ash Wednesday, beginning with the first word and cover all seven of them through Good Friday. So please join us for our midweek Lenten services as we examine uh, this seventh and last word of Jesus from the cross. Let us now sing, O Master, let me walk with you, hymn number 818, in the back of your church. This hymn was written by Washington Gladden, G-L-A-D-E-N, in 1879. He was an American minister, the chairman, he was the champion of the poor working people. Sometimes he was shunned by his church because he opposed the rich and he, was in, he worked hard crusading for the poor. He wrote this hymn when he was left alone in the church and rejected by many of the people who wanted to, to uh, champion the people who had money. Washington Gladden was the champion of the poor. and affects them for the rest of 
Sunday life. I had a classmate in elementary school who was a boy. <coughs> classmate also in church in Sunday school. His dad ran for uh, what was known as county judge executive back in Kentucky. And he was expected to win. But his opponent pulled a surprise and upset him. He never ran for office again. He had had a promising future, but that one loss hurt him so bad that he never dared to enter into the world of politics again. And we see that in other fields as well. Sometimes <laughs> someone fails uh, at a job and it affects them. And they end up accepting a job really that's below their abilities and below uh, their, where they had been in their station of life at the time that they had to fail. So, failure is an orphan. The success everybody wants to embrace. But when we come to our spiritual life, just like so many things, <coughs> our spiritual life is totally different than the secular world. For whereas in the world you fail, and oftentimes you, you do not receive a second chance, fail with God. And God gives you a second chance. Fail with God and God gives you a new beginning. Fail with God and God gives you a chance over and over and over and over again. As long as you have faith in Him, trust in Him, and repent of your faith. This is made clear to us in our Old Testament reading for the day. The familiar story of Jonah. We all remember Jonah from Sunday school class and vacation Bible school. Jonah was a prophet whom God had called upon to take a message to the great city of Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrians were a very brutal empire. They were very wicked. They were terrifying to those whom they opposed and conquered. Assyria was an enemy of Israel. Jonah would love nothing better than for Nineveh to be destroyed. So when God comes to him and says, Listen, Jonah, I want you to go to that great city of Nineveh, and I want you to preach to them a message of repentance, that if they repent, then I will forgive them, but if they don't repent, I'm going to destroy that city in 40 days. Well, Jonah just thought that was Jim Navy. Nothing better. I'll just hope, wait out those 40 days and let Nineveh be destroyed. So what does Jonah do? Instead of going east to Nineveh, he books passage on a ship going west to be further away from Nineveh. <laughs> Thinking, God will never know. I'll just hang out with my new friends in Tarshish, count up to 40 days, and when they're gone, I'll ship back over to Israel. But we know what happens. He books passage, ship gets out on the sea, the waves become choppy, a storm comes up, the sailors are panicking, they're throwing things overboard, they're crying out of fear, and Jonah mans up and says, look, fellas, I'm your problem. I'm running from God. Throw me overboard, everything will be fine. Sure enough, they throw Jonah overboard, and the storm stops. Along comes a big old fish. Yeah, of course, when I was growing up back in you know, the 50s and 60s, we were always told it was a whale. The scholars say, oh, no, that Hebrew doesn't say it's a whale. It just says it's a great big fish. So if we want to believe the biologists, they tell us that, you know, centuries ago, great white sharks were 50 feet long, not 25. They had a mouth bigger than 6 feet wide. So maybe it was a great white shark. Maybe jaw small. It doesn't matter. Something swallowed him. And while he was in it, he repented, and after three days, or on that third day, God had the fish spit Jonah back up on land, and contrite and humble Jonah heads to Nineveh. But his heart's still heavy, because he wants to, only to speak that message of destruction. He don't want to talk about repentance. But this is where the point that we picked up today comes in. God gives us second chances. In the secular world, in the human world, had we called somebody in and told them we had this job,
job for them to do, and they took off and didn't do it, we'd have fired them. We'd have never brought them back. But as our Old Testament lesson began today, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against them. In the message that I tell you, notice it says that I tell you, not the message you want to give, the message I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. So as we look at this, the word Hebrew word translated as word means literally what is to be said. So then what was to be said of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. That word second literally means a new beginning. And this is a very important theological point that is not only here, but we see it throughout the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. We see Jesus doing it from the cross. We see the apostles that spread that message throughout the Roman world. God gives new beginnings. That is the great thing about the Christian faith. That is one of those theological points that separate us from the religions of the world. We have it revealed to us in Holy Scripture and through the living word Jesus Christ that we can fail and God gives us a new beginning. That we can fail and God doesn't hold it against us. We can fail when He calls us to do something and He doesn't have it on our resume and keep bringing it up and reminding us about how we failed it. Instead, He wipes it clean when we repent and gives us a new beginning. It's as if Jonah had never disobeyed God. It's as if Jonah had never run away from God. It's as if he had obeyed it from the very beginning. What is puzzling is why Jonah thought he could run away from God in the first place. Because we go all the way back to the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. And what do we read in that third chapter of Genesis? We read how our first parents, Adam and Eve, ate of that forbidden fruit. They now realize they sinned. They, they realize they're naked, which means they've lost their innocence and realize they're wrong. They hear God come and they try to hide from it. They can't hide from God. God finds them. God knows what's going on. That's the same with Jonah. It's the same with you and me. You can run from God, but you can't hide from Because he knows where you are. He may call you to something, and you just don't like what it is he wants you to do. So you try to run away from him. But believe me, he's going to know where you are, and he's going to keep telling you this is the service I want you to do for so take a lesson from Jonah. And if you fail God once, he calls him in, come back because he's given you a good life. He's not going to hold it against you. As human beings, we do this in relationships all the time. That is the negative aspect of them, constantly bringing up people's failures. We'll remind people. What they did, how they let us down, how they disappointed us. We remind them of when they didn't do what we asked them to do. Because we're human beings. But God wipes us like clean. It's as if it never happened. And as we read then, so it came a second time, or a new beginning. So God tells him, Arise, go to Nineveh, they great city, call out against it the message that is proclaim, preach the message that I tell you, so it's what God wills, not what Jonah wills. So Jonah arose and went to them. That word arose means to take immediate or dramatic action. This time Jonah doesn't stop and argue. This time Jonah doesn't stop to debate. Jonah immediately takes off from them. And that's the kind of God we have. We can fail him terribly gives us a new beginning. Some people end up with a blemish on their school record or on their work record. They can't ever have that erased. God does. God calls you, you fail him, he calls you again and he gives you that new beginning. So we have a God of new beginnings, a God of second chances, 
God who wants us to come back to Him even when we fail. To put our whole heart in trusting Him. So Jonah immediately takes action, takes off, obeys God. Because this is what's behind that word as well, is obedience. Now Jonah's being obedient. We're not always obedient to God. But when we are and we fail, all we have to do is repent to God. And He welcomes us back with open arms. I've shared this story with you before about how when I was in seminary, one of the quarters of seminary or semesters, whatever they're on now, that is, you have to do what's called CPE, clinical pastoral education. That means you spend that quarter in a hospital working with the chaplain of that hospital. I did my CPE at the old local general hospital in downtown Warwick. This old hospital had an 81 emergency room rating or whatever the ranking is. It meant they could do open heart surgery in that emergency room. The thing was about local generalists, that's where you wanted to go if you were in an accident or had a heart attack or whatever, but then once you were able to leave intensive care, then you wanted to transfer to one of the other hospitals for your recovery because the local general being a public hospital, some people looked at it and it was a playground that was where they could uh, come in and sleep off a uh, hangover or whatever. And I, I remember one night a doctor and I came out of the emergency room and there was this little lady there and she looked at us and she said, were well, you going to give me that drink or not? <laughs> and we're like, uh, ma'am, I think you're in the wrong place. You know, I have to go down to the snack area. There'd be little kids running around 12 midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, playing, being out in the lobby, jumping on the furniture and all that. It was the public hospital, but it was the best emergency room, best trauma care, best intensive care, but they didn't want to go someplace else because they still had wards. It was like the old town hospital you see in the movies, wards, just only a curtain separated you from people on either side. But anyhow, getting back to the point I want to make, is one night in the emergency room, this young mother came in who had tried to commit suicide. And as the doctor and I talked to her, the doctor, it turned out, was a good devout Southern Baptist. So he was speaking to her as I was spiritual. He wasn't speaking to her just medically, but ignoring the spiritual side. So we were trying to find out why had she committed suicide, or tried to commit suicide. And what we learned was that she had a little child. The child was sick. And the child continued to to come down with all kinds of illnesses and, and almost died. And she went to one of these churches where you have a lot of in Kentucky and the rest of the South where there's some self-ordained guy that picks up the King James Version of the Bible and suddenly claims that God has called him to preach. And they're very legalistic and very fundamentalist. And her preacher had told her her baby was suffering because of her because of what she did, because she was a sinner. She wasn't right with God. Therefore, God was punishing her through punishing her baby. She knew nothing of God of second chances. She knew nothing of God who forgives when we come to Him and ask for forgiveness. And so that doctor and myself, we spent that time with her, telling her who the real Jesus was, who the real God the Father was. It's not this horrible judge taking out her sinfulness on her poor innocent little child convincing her that suicide was not the way out. That all she had to do was come back to that God with second chances. Come to that God in new beginnings. And that's the way it is. With the Christian faith. That through Jesus Christ we have a God who's a God of second chances. A God who is a God of new beginnings. We get a new beginning every day. This is why Martin Luther told us in a catechism, if you have the full catechism, small catechism with the, at the back of it, saying what the duties of the household are and so forth, uh, he says every morning when you rise from bed, you should make the sign of the cross to remind you of your baptism. And so that the waters of baptism can rewash and give you that new beginning, make it a new day, a new beginning. And after you make the sign of the cross, say the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer, and then he gives you a morning prayer. 
So that you go through the day knowing that you believe in a God of new beginnings. Any employee would have fired John. He totally disobeyed what he was supposed to do. And God comes back to Job. He says, come on, pick yourself up. You know you were wrong. I forgive you. Now get to them. So then what we see is that God not only will he cause us to do something, if we fail, will send us back to the site of our failure so that we can amend it. But when we go back, trusting in him gives us great success. For what we read is, now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breath. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. This word overthrown is the same Hebrew word. It means totally destroyed. It's the same Hebrew word used to describe the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so the destruction was going to be complete. Of course, that would have made Jonah really happy. But Jonah has now committed to saying what God's will is, what God's message is, not what his message is. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. They believed God. Here was a wicked people, one of the most brutal empires. The Syrians, for example, you're not familiar with what the Assyrians would do, they'd come into a country to conquer it. And anybody they captured, they would hold until they got to the city walls, and then they would lay a siege to the city. And while the people watched from the walls, they would take the soldiers they had captured in the battles before that, and any people who had been living on farms or outside the city walls for whatever reason. And they would drive stakes in the ground with these sharpened points. And then before it to the horror of the people on the walls watching, they would take the victim and pick him up and impale him <coughs> on that stake. And let him just slide down that stake until it came out through the top of their body. When they conquered a city, the soldiers who had defended that city, they would march out in front of the city walls, they'd cut off their hands and their feet and stack them on top of each other like cordwood so that they could die a slow, agonizing death hunger, thirst, and exposure. These are the kind of people we're talking about. They worship all kinds of gods and goddesses that were brutal and uh, fit their image, fit what they wanted. And yet here they hear the word of God and they believe. Reminding us of the power of the word of God. God the creator who spoke and our world came into being. The living word, Jesus Christ, who spoke and revealed to us that God is indeed that God of new beginning and second chances. That God loves us so much he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die on our behalf. To pay the debt of sin that we owe so that we may be his own and live under him in his kingdom. The power of the word. These brutal people are convicted of their sin through hearing that the message and they believe. That word believe means to trust in, to have confidence in. Uh, it means to view as reliable, to confirm as being true or being the only one. And they all, now Jonah didn't tell them they had to put on sackcloth, call the ashes, but they do. And the part that we omitted in our reading, verses 6 to 9, tells us the king himself, this man who looked at himself as no one's evil who ruled an empire by such brute force steps down from his throne, takes off his royal robe, puts on sackcloth and ashes, and issues a decree that all people in Nineveh, including the animals, will be wrapped in sackcloth and ashes and will fast until the word of the Lord tells them they can stop. That is the power of the God we have. He overcomes faith. He takes us when we disappoint him, when we sin against him, and gives us a new beginning. He doesn't hold it against us. And he is not this way just with us, but with all people. But how do we know when we read verse 10? When God saw what they did, that is in view 
Peter inspected what the Ninevites did and how they turned from their evil way. That word turn, the Hebrew word that means to turn back to God or Yahweh, God's proper name. And it also means to turn around. In a lot of places in the Old Testament, it's translated as repent. When you repent, you turn around, you turn back to God. So when he saw that they turned back to him and gave up their evil ways, God relented of the disaster he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. That word relent means a change of heart or purpose. God's heart was changed, his purpose was changed, and he didn't accomplish, which is what the word, uh, the words translated would do. It means to accomplish or what he was going to make or what he was going to be done. He changes his heart from doing that and accepts them as his own. A new beginning. Here these people have been living this vile life. They had been brutal to Israel and everybody else had come. And yet, by repenting from hearing the word of God, they're given a new beginning. They're given a second chance. So, to overcome failure, we follow the example of Job. We turn back to God. And we let God replace us in that area of failure and trust Him to enable us to have success <laughs> to His glory. So when God calls you, don't try to run away. Because as I said, you can run, but you can't hide. When God calls you, instead of running away, embrace the challenge He gives you. Fulfill what he says and watch him grant you with that success and overcome your failures. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. As that you now turn to page 105 on the front of your worship book, your words of the Apostle. our confession of faith, we invite you to confess that you believe right along with us and say the Apostles' Creed. I invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stay. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. This is a powerful Amen. prayer. We're praying together the prayers of intercession. We invite you to pray along with us and join in the power of Christ. you to come join us and worship anytime at St. John's Lutheran Church. These are some of the best people that you'll ever come and encounter. Children of God, we believe God is our Father and we are His masterpieces. He has called us to repent, believe, love God, love our neighbor. Come and join us. We'd love to have you anytime. We love you. We miss you. We invite you to come if you're able to worship with us. We're Lutheran in our uh, service, but if you're not Lutheran, you can certainly pick it up. God is here with us. Jesus is with us. We're two or three are gathered together. We are here. We follow him. This is the third Sunday after the Epiphany, January 25th. This is the last Sunday in January. Today we're we are celebrating the service of the Word. 
We look to God's word, the love letters that he writes to us. He's all good. He's worthy of all of our love. All we need to do is repent, believe, ask Jesus to come into our heart, make him Lord of our lives. And we're born again. Then we receive the joy of living as children of God. We also, next week, will receive God's presence, the presence of Jesus who died on the cross to save us from sin. Holy Communion next week. This week we're celebrating the service of the Word. Next week is Holy Communion. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We invite you to come worship with us any Sunday, 8 o'clock or 1030. Best people you'll ever encounter, children of God. God is our Father. Jesus is our brother. Thomerson. She also wrote the music. 1934 is when she was born, still living, hymn writer. This hymn is following the theme of, I will follow the call of God. Follow him for God's masterpieces. He has something in mind for all of us to do. We will walk as children of the light. We repent and we believe God's given us a second chance. God is all good and deserving of all of our love. And he has forgiven us. We have invited him to come into our hearts. We live with him day by day. He walks with us, we walk with him. That's our hymn for today.
thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Turn in any, tune in anytime for our broadcast. We're happy to bring you this service. Our church offers a Christian school program, ages three and four, nursery and pre-K. Call the school office, 325-4311. If you're interested, we have daycare, we have Christian school. If you know anybody who needs this service, we have a great chance to influence the children to let them know Jesus' love. Jesus loves them. I hope and pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you this day in all your days. I'm your announcer, Dr. Sally Abbott, Linda Fox is a videographer. We love bringing this service to you. We hope that you'll talk to others about coming to our service. We want you to be here to worship with us, to be with these wonderful people who are Christians, who are children of God, you're a child of God. Come be with us and worship God as he asks us to. Jesus will then be with you, repent, believe, ask Jesus to come into your heart. You will, he will be your Savior and be with you and have eternal life. Next week, we have Holy Communion. We received the body and blood of Jesus Christ as he has promised. When we do this, we receive eternal life. We pray for you. We continue to pray for us. Watch us on YouTube anytime. see Jesus Christ and his role as prophet, priest, and king. He died to save us. He died on the cross to save us from sins. All we have to do is repent, believe, ask Jesus to come into our